Mariana Williamson last night um, touched on the subject of reparations. And I want to talk about this because it led to her being the most searched candidate in the race last night with her performance. But the reason why I want to talk about this is because I always talk about, tell you guys about representation. Now, last night, Don Lemon was the one who asked this question to her and to the other candidates about reparations. But I made a video about a month ago talking about the candidates that was chosen. When you watch Ho Jose Diaz in that first debate, the first thing that come out of his mouth was about immigration. He represented for his people. But you also had Lester Holt on there. And through the whole night, you didn't hear Lester Holt say a goddamn thing about black people. Not one thing about black people. He didn't talk about reparations. He didn't talk about uh, black women mortality rates during pregnancy. He didn't talk about black poverty. Nothing. But Jose Diaz go right up there representing for Mexicans every single time. Every single time. And see, this is the problem when I see people like Charlemagne talk about, yo, I'm fighting for all black people. I want all black people. No, I'm not fighting for all black people because all black people ain't fighting for all black people. And that's why when you talk about journalism, we don't need more black bodies in Washington, D.C. or in the mainstream media, we need more black voices. So you seen Don Lemon out there when he throw that topic out there. That's what black journalists supposed to be doing. And dude was out there talking about, um, well, with Trump, we need more black people in the media to teach white people how to talk about this stuff. And I said, no. The problem is you got too many black people trying to be the modern minority and have respectable politics. There's too many Lester Holtz in the media, man. And this young white lady, she was saying, you know, the reason why we don't have more people of color in the media is because white people in the media want black people to be more objective. And what they mean is if for black people not to talk about black stuff or try to be moderate and stoke the line of the status quo. See, white people don't have to do that. They don't have to do that. They can go right on there and be white, moderate to conservative and nobody see that as a problem. But if you have a black person in the media or a Latino person in the media and they talk about issue pertaining to their community, then white people see that as a problem. They see that as those people are not being objective. They're not practicing to being the modern minority or having respectable politics surrounding us. Then so you see talk about what the white people talk about. This is what you see the Congressional Black Caucus is. The Congressional Black Caucus, if you listen to those people, man, they sound just like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Their politics is absolutely the same. They do not represent their communities. And this is the same thing that Donald Trump was pointing out about Elijah Cummings. That they don't fight for their communities. Only time they talk about race is when they thrusting it at the Republican Party for being racist. And the only reason they talk about it then is rally black people to the Democratic Party. See, right now, Bernie Sanders, he said, he said, you know, any old blue won't do. Any old blue won't do. And what he's talking about is we cannot just be out here talking about beating Donald Trump. 
But if you see all of the black politicians, they didn't made all our problems, all black people problem, all Mexican, all white people problem, whatever in the country is just Donald Trump. No, people had these problems before Donald Trump came along. Mm-hmm. Racism was a problem before Donald Trump came along. But what they're doing is trying to aim black people to just to be mad at Donald Trump. And you see that it's working. It's working. The media have worked at this angle. The black politicians have worked at this angle. The Latino politicians have lived at this angle. Where you see Americans now saying, we're not concerned whether or not we agree with these candidates on policy. We just want somebody who can beat Donald Trump. This is why you live in a country today where 78% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. 50% of the middle class is on food stamps and Medicare. 50% of Americans don't have $4,400 for an emergency. And we got 42% of Americans that are paycheck away from falling back into poverty. This is how we get here. Where issues and policies now is taking the back door to who can beat the Republicans. And see, this is the thing I said about Dr. King a long time ago. The reason why Dr. King was so successful, him in the civil rights movement, is because these people was about policy. They held both political parties accountable. He talked mostly about the Democratic Party. Why? Because that's who his people was voting for. That's who he was in the bed with. This is like my stance with gay people. I don't give a damn what gay people are doing. That's their damn business. I'm not sleeping with gay people. And that's the same way with African Americans. You got to understand, in 1960, it was only about 54% of African Americans that was really voting for the Democratic Party. Now you got like 96, 97% of African Americans voting for the Democratic Party, and they don't try to push the Democratic Party to do nothing. And you know the reason why? It's because the, the Democratic Party and Congressional Black Caucus and black people in the media keep pushing this boogeyman in front of them, scaring the hell out of them, and that is the Republican Party. And they out there voting blindly instead of voting their interests, their economic interests in this country. And we have too many of those people in the media. And that's why it was good to see Don Lemon ask that question about reparations to Mariana Williamson, and she was able to sit there and give a fantastic answer on that topic, even though her numbers is too low. Because I think she was talking like $800 million or something like that, when the number is anywhere from between $10 trillion to $17 trillion. She's going to short change it. But she short changed it, but it's a start, right? That's how politics normally works. You had to start a conversation first, to get it going. But the reason why I respected Don Lemon for talking about bringing the subject up, because the Democrats were just talking about a couple of weeks ago how they want this reparation thing to go away. They don't want to talk about it. So when I when I see Don Lemon comes in and he t- brings the topic up, I look at Lester Holt and say, why you didn't? Because I'm pretty sure you knew that the Democrats don't want to talk about this neither, and you played your respectable politics card and then bring it up in the debate. Didn't want to rough no fathers. Didn't want to rough no fathers, man. And that's why I said the truth of the matter is a lot of y'all black folks out there, y'all need a Me Too movement y'all selves. Because y'all over in there cold switching on y'all jobs, fighting for white validation, white acceptance, and fighting against white rejection. Y'all are hurting y'all people in this country, man. How the hell do these young black kids out here can dream about becoming a journalist or an astronaut or a doctor or a lawyer when they're not seeing themselves represented there? What they're seeing is a bunch of black folks in white face. I mean, a bunch of white folks in black face, excuse me. What they're seeing is you identify culturally more with white people than you do your own. How can these young kids dream about doing something when they're not seeing they self being represented there? Where the topics pertaining to their life doesn't get discussed. But you didn't see that from Jose Diaz. He go right up in there talking about his people and his issues. 
right up in there. You see the Asian community. They suing Harvard University, talking about their issues. You see even the uh, the caucus, the, the, the black immigrant caucus. They be out there steady fighting for their issues. But when it comes to African Americans, y'all cats out there stalling. Y'all out there talking about all the other people issues instead of people, your own people. And see, you have Cory Booker and Kamala Harris, both of them out there trying to claim their blackness, but both of them run away from the reparation issues that you got to have a damn white woman to sit up there and give the best answer on the issue. Kamala Harris out there talking about, no, I ain't going to just do nothing for black people. Cory Booker out there with his nonsense. And see, black people, we didn't allow too many black politicians to get away with this. Well, they push everybody else's issues, but black people issues take to the wayside. We didn't fought for enough people. When they were getting their ass whooped in the Civil War, black people was there to save this country. Our people then fought in every single war in the United States of America history. We fought for all the immigrants in 1965. That's why they was able to come to the country. It's because we fought for them to be able to come here to this country. It gets to a point now where we in this relationship with, with all these so-called coalitions in this country, but we... It's one-sided love out here, bro. If y'all gonna be in one-sided love in this relationship, y'all might well be at home masturbating. You might well be at home masturbating because that's what you're doing anyway. Self-love. Because they ain't giving you anything in return. Minorities, didn't, black people didn't fought for every single group in this country, man. And we haven't gotten that. And putting black lives in your, black lives matter in your damn hashtag, that is not enough. That is not enough. But when it comes to topics, when you go around and you look at the immigrant class in this country from the writers in the media and stuff like that, you've seen a lot of these people coming out against reparations. Talking about we don't know if the government or should immigrants be able to pay for reparations. Man, y'all are not here if it's not for African Americans. And when you live in a country, you take on that country's problems, and they future problems, and they present. You, y'all didn't have no problems with the, them giving $38 billion to the Jewish community. You didn't have no problem paying for the reparation that went to the Indians. You didn't have no problems or, paying up money for the Japanese concentration camps. Y'all don't even have no problems to help build all these damn billion-dollar stadiums that are around the country building. But when it comes to African-Americans... Here we go with all this. Well, we don't know who's really African American. No, we do. We can do DNA tests, ancestry tests, and figure that out. That is easy. People know who where they come from. Y'all keep acting like slavery was a thousand years ago. It wasn't. It wasn't. But we need more black voices in Washington, D.C. Not just black bodies, bro. So big up to Don Lemon for asking that question and big up for Mariana Williamson telling the truth about the history of this country and why reparation is due. Hit that like button, people. Subscribe. 